Hey guys, welcome to the Daily Word Bible Study. A plain and simple book by book, um, chapter by chapter, and verse by verse study through the entire Bible. Now currently we are in Psalm 117, making our way through this 150 collection of wisdom, poetry, prophecy. Praise to God. These are songs, let's keep that in mind, even though I am reading them, they are songs, and then even more specifically, songs set to Hebrew melodies. So, all right, let's get to it. Psalms, one, Psalms 17. Now, this is the sh short Psalm, by the way, one, one of the shortest psalm, Psalms. It says, verse one, praise the Lord, all nations, glorify him, all peoples. Now, um, what's interesting about this Psalm is that, or the statement, even though we focus the biblical as we read the Bible and we focus on um, the nation of Israel and, and what's going on in the nation of Israel, again, we're constantly reminded God is the God of all nations. So, in other words, all nations are going to answer to God. All nations are going to stand before God. Verse 2, for his faithful love, uh, to us is great. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Hallelujah. Uh, Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Let Israel say, his faithful love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his faithful love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his faithful love endures forever. Again, as you can see, the, 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 what, what should be prominent in our thoughts is God's love and faithfulness, not the God of wrath. Uh, if, if, if you were to face the, the God of wrath, if anyone, anyone, even to this day, if you face the God of wrath, it's because of disobedience disobedience to the gospel. I mean, Jesus is the ultimate expression of God's faithful love and mercy. So when you reject him, yeah, you're going to face wrath. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 5, I called to the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and put me in a spacious place. The Lord is for me. I will not be afraid. Who? What can man do to me? The Lord is my helper. Therefore, I will look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. And if ever, anything is so true, you should never trust man. In this, because ultimately man, because he is sinful, will turn on you. Verse 9, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in nobles. Um, or politicians, kings, leaders, that's true. All nations surrounded me. In the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. Uh, they surrounded me, yes, they surrounded me. In the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. They sound. Now, let me just point out, and again, periodically, uh, I know I should. I, I have been doing this, but the, the 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 use of the word Yahweh, the Yahweh, there are three kind of translations, English translations of the name of God. Yahweh is one of them. The Lord or Lord is another. And then Jehovah. Uh, and then there's a whole big debate as to which one is the greater one. I do not engage in those. Since I'm not a Hebrew scholar, um, without a, what, what is most of a consensus is that those three translations of the name of God, okay, are acceptable. Yahweh, Jehovah the Lord. So, all right, verse 11, they surround me. Yes, they surrounded me in the name of Yahweh. I destroyed them. Verse 12, they surrounded me like bees. They were extinguished like a fire among thorns. In the name of Yahweh, I destroyed them. You push me hard to make me fall. 
but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Now, the word salvation in this sense is used to being saved from our enemies, saved from destruction. Obviously, when we think about salvation, saved from our sins, saved from the wrath of God through Jesus. But the word salvation or saved can be used as the psalmist here is using it from our enemies. Verse 15. There is shouts of joy and victory in the tents of the righteous. The Lord, the Lord's right hand performs valiantly. The Lord's right hand is raised. The Lord's right hand performs violently. Now, whenever you see the term right hand or right arm, it always shows a, 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 a place of power and prestige. Okay? The right hand. That's what it means. The right hand. So Jesus is at the right hand of God. So, therefore, it is the highest position you could be in terms of a leader or a king, in relationship to a king. Verse 17, I will not die, but I will live and proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord disciplined me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Now, one of the ways God disciplines you, there are two ways. You, well, not there, there's a few ways, but uh, one is rebuke, correction. And the other is turning you over to your ways. That's one way of discipline. And God would discipline when you see Israel being conquered by their enemy numerous times throughout their history. That was an act of the discipline of God. Verse 19, open the gates of righteousness for me. I will enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous will enter through it. I will give thanks to you because you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord. It is wonderful in your eyes. And of course, this is a, a prophecy of Jesus. Jesus um, quoted this to the Pharisees and shame them actually you know that the stones that the builders rejected now in building sometimes you would have these cornerstones that that, that they were the foundation and the illustration here is uh, you know you have these builders that reject this 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 stone that co comes i mean ends up being the main foundation of everything of course of everything so the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone. This came from the Lord. It is wonderful in your eyes. Of course, during Jesus' time, it would have been directly to the Pharisees and the leaders of Israel who, who rejected Jesus. That was the ultimate salvation of the world. Verse 24. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Now the word day also, not only could it mean the actual 24-7, you know, Monday through Friday, Sunday through Saturday day, but it also could be a time frame. So, like, for example, we are in the day of salvation. Uh, the seven-year tribulation period would be a day of God's wrath. Uh, verse 25, Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed from the house of the Lord we bless you the Lord is God and it's given us light bind the festival sacrifices with cords to the horns of the altar you are my God and I will give you and I will give you thanks you are my God I will exalt you give thanks to the Lord for he is good his faithful love endures forever Hmm. Okay. Okay. My thing is freezing up again. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Well, some. Oh, you know what? Hmm. All right, guys. Did I do uh, some? Hmm. <laughs> Okay, um, 
I didn't know I was coming up on this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Here's what I'm going to do with this chapter. This is the longest chapter. Hmm. This is the longest chapter. Psalm 119. Um. Okay. I'm going to explain this chapter, which is kind of great. But I'm not, I think I'm, I'm not going to get into it now. I think I'm going to stop the Bible. I'm going to get it in the next study. Um, because, wow, this is going to be a long chapter. It is, Psalm 119 is probably the equivalent of 8 to 10 chapters. Okay. Um, and kind of how they even have it here, it is representing like a letter of the Hebrew alphabet alphabet and then um but the main point of psalm 119 is um it is the word of god i mean it is the word of god now i'm going to come out of this because like i said i'm not going to get it i'll get into it next time and <laughs> uh it it's going to be a, a wonderful study through it, but it is the word of God. And the reason why I wanted to kind of, I'm going to cut it short there. Like I said, I kind of, kind of, I got absent-minded and I didn't realize I was coming up on it that quickly. Probably would have squeezed the other two Psalms in the last study, but anyway. Um, but this is, this is something that this Psalm is about the word of God. The fact that it is the longest the longest chapter, the longest chapter, tells us how important God's word is. And I think that's the most, the takeaway from it. How important God's word is. Now, when you stop and you think about it, God in his sovereignty, how he decided to put things into play, creation, the the world and then mankind in the world <clears throat> the world so in his sovereignty sovereignty the word of god is one of the most important things to us because it is through this revelation of the written word of god that we know god now, there are a lot of people that will say that they hear from God. I, I, I can tell you right now, I have never heard the voice of God. I've never, uh, I, I cannot tell you if, if I did, if, if God did speak to me, I certainly could not tell you that I recognized it. Um... And and, and, and and put it like this, most of the people that claim that they've heard from God, I don't believe it. <laughs> okay. I just don't believe it. Um, so, and the reason why is because when you read the word, I know now how to identify someone that claims to um, hear from God or speak for God. In other words, if you claim to speak from God, now, having read the Bible, I now know what to say, how to, what the criteria is. You know, God himself is going to validate. And as we're making through, this is one of the passions why I have, you know, the, 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 to teach the plain and simple, verse by verse, chapter by chapter, book by book, Genesis to Revelation. Because again, to me, when you when we read it in its simple form and we understand it, it will transcend denominations, traditions of men, correction. I mean, everything we can think about it. So, um, the Word of God is the most important thing, and I said that because remember, the Word of God is what reveals God. You think about the couple of Psalms you just read about the difference between idols and God. The fact that we know that God is just. 
<clears throat> good. A lot of the um, pagan. We don't know. You don't know anything about them. Those who invented the pagan gods. You don't know anything about them. And certainly, do do they reveal themselves as the way God has re revealed them? In my opinion, I would say that most of them copy the true God, Buddha, um, Allah. Um, and you can go list on and on and on and on and on of all these different pagan gods. Um, to me, they, they, they've copied the knowledge of God that he has revealed that at some point in time in human history, human history, God invaded and gave us revelation of himself. God invaded and gave us um, what we should know about him, what is right, what is wrong. And I think other religions copy that. They copy it to a point. When you think about what Allah believes, and a lot of people think that Islam is more of a distant cousin to Christianity. Not, nothing can be farther from the truth. The the, 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 the the teachings of Muhammad were then later written and, and and expanded upon. But they don't teach. They don't they don't come anywhere close to what the written revelation of God is. To me, not even close. Not even close. Okay, so you think about every other religion what they teach. Every other religion. And to me, as we're going through, just think about the wisdom. Wait till we get to the book of Proverbs. Wait, I mean, just everything um, about the revelation that the Bible teaches us, no other religion can compare to it. I, I'd go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with, with any. Here, here's a good example, because I'm kind of doing this right now, with the black Hebrew Israelites who claim to be the black Jews. So my, I've yet to hear, hear, hear any of them kind of show or prove how they are the physical descendants of Abraham. The fact that they believe that uh, their focus is on black skin color. That's their focus. The black Hebrew Israelites, that's their focus. That's not the focus of God. God loves the world. They say, well, the world means black people. Okay. All right, so I'm going to, like I said, I'll pick it up with Psalm 119 because it is, again, I don't even know how, it, it's, it's a long chapter, by the way. So, okay, guys, don't forget to like and share this video. Subscribe to BP, the Bible Perspective. And as always, if you have a thought or comment, add it to the comment section below. All comments are welcome. Until next time, I will see you then.